So I read Alice in Wonderland. I read through the looking glass. I reread it. I reread it. I was reading in between the lines. I was reading stories about Lewis Carroll. I was reading his history and his, you know, the wine taster at Christ Church, having, you know, fascination with young girls, but when they were 13, they would abandon him or he would abandon them. And his, the basement where he kept his, his costumes for the theater and how he would dress up in them and dance around and all these sort of things. So I, I was trying to find out who Lewis Carroll was. And then I was looking around my friends and once I decided on the idea to do the family of cards is a deck of cards and I realized that the cards that we know are the minor arcanum of the tarot cards then it started delving into the spiritual aspect and astrology and the 12 months of the year and the 12 signs of the zodiac and the four seasons and the four suits of the playing cards and all of this started to have this wonderful divine spiritual meaning, mystical meaning, metaphysical meaning. And so I said, well, okay, let's start Alice in Wonderland. When I got to the deck of cards, I picked one person from each zodiac sign, Aries, Bellier. I was reading about the tarot cards. I was reading about the astrology of the Queen of Spades is the most dangerous card in the deck. So I used the German Volkswagen tag with the Palestinian face, because Juliana was the Palestinian, is in uh, the androgynous portrait. And Yahweh, before the Common Era, is a tag and a Venezuelan plates for OPEC. So we're going to throw all this together in case we haven't said enough. And this is a bean that hung from some tree in, I think, Venezuela, because I just got back from Venezuela, where my sister had married the king of spades, an Afro-Indian Venezuelan who was the head of DuPont in Venezuela. And so I gave personalities and chose different signs Clint Jackson was a musician in the south of France and he was coming and going and he was the most infidel thing to all of his girlfriends and boyfriends that you can imagine, but he was so entertaining. He was a great person to have at a party, to talk to. Juliana was an intellectual, speaking four or five languages, having gone to school in major universities in Europe, and head of DuPont. Michel Deforge, who was the critic for a newspaper, The Daily American in Rome, uh, Samantha Spectacle in Nice and Côte d'Azur. This was a person I met on the train and she was a schizophrenic because I combined her portrait with somebody else's and so I gave them two personalities. Of course, the spades in reading cards, it's like a symbol of change or death. The heart is passion. I used a a Spanish book for the diamonds, which is money, papers, and documents. And the Christianity, the cross, on a cushion from a church to be the symbol of spirituality or negative money. So when I started reading the cards, my sister read cards. She was brilliant in things like that. Of course, she's all making things up from the ether but somehow after a thousand readings, everybody that I read their cards, they said, that is exactly me. And I said, wow, this works. This little form of whatever it is works. So these cards started as trying to delve into Lewis Carroll's mind and just selecting friends, personal friends and family to pose. And it was more fun because when you're sitting and you're doing a portrait of someone you are looking in their face for three or four hours, eye to eye, and you are absorbing their thoughts. You're, you're really finding out who they are. And if it wasn't the right person, 
I said, don't try to control this too much, Mr. Control Freak. Go ahead and do that because it'll fit in eventually. You are not the person doing this. You're just the medium. So I would continue and I would give them symbols and things like that. Judy Desaubry was a great friend, a collector of my work. She was a writer. She was eventually doing quilts, patchwork quilts and symbolic quilts. And she, she wrote and she loved to cook. She was Chinese Dutch. Um, this is her son, Xavier. She was an intellectual. This was her brother-in-law, Alain de Lazelinck. He was a French noble and he really controlled a lot. So when these cards would come up, in the position of reading the cards, there's a position of control, a position of ego, a position of the inner soul, the whole position of the outer soul, the buffer cards that protect the soul or let people pass through th thoughts and ideas to express yourself or to not. And this is how I learned to read the cards. It was after my sisters reading the tarot cards, using the same technique but doing my own cards, knowing the people and reading their characteristics in the place of inner soul, what other people see, what you want to bring into your life and put out of your life. It was phenomenal to realize that this worked, that I didn't, I did it kind of as a, a test, you know, ex exploration into the, if you want, the metaphysical, or some people would negatively call the occult, but it wasn't. It was just trying to delve into reality, as Lewis Carroll was trying to delve into the reality of his own mind and the English society.